Hello, fans, viewers, and listeners. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Fight Insight Podcast, where we bring you all the latest news, updates, and analysis from the world of mixed martial arts. I'm your co-host, Brady Bunch, a.k.a. the Non-Binary Ninja. And with me, as always, we got Timmy B., the man who brought us all Fight Insight. Uh, today, we're going to talk to two up-and-coming stars, right? Kind of, kind of special, right? Uh, and we're going to discuss why DC is a jerk, uh, Benil's a saint, and a whole lot more. Uh, Tim, you can hit it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Fight Insight Podcast. Let's talk. Two guests today, and it might become a natural thing, Brady Bunch, because we're getting more and more guests wanting to come on. So our guest today, our first guest today, is a young Canadian fighter who next enters the cage this Saturday, June 17th at BTC 20, Night of Champions 2 in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. He hails from Hamilton, Ontario, and our friend and former guest of the podcast, Josh the Gentleman Hill, told us that he is the rising star to watch out for, so we're very happy to have him here today. He is the he was the number one ranked amateur bantamweight in Canada. He fought for Team Canada Kickboxing, won the Canadian Nationals for Kickboxing in 2019, and was the MFL amateur bantamweight champion. Everybody, please welcome to the podcast, Liam Gallagher. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. How are you doing, Liam? I'm good. I'm good. Just enjoying the final week of preparations here and getting ready to fight. That's it. That's it. This is fight week for you, my friend, and uh, very exciting. You're back in the cage. BTC 20. Liam, who the heck is Liam Gallagher? Uh, I am. I was a 5-0 and amateur, 2-1 and one as a pro. I've been fighting for about... Start off as a kickboxer, about 10 amateur kickboxing fights before I transitioned into MMA. Yeah, so I've had around like I think 15, 20 fights total. I've been doing it probably since I was about I started fighting around 18. I'm 25 now, so that's that's about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what got you into fighting? I actually I started off like I wrestled a few years in high school, and oh, nice. uh, so I started off as a wrestler like for a year or two, and then. There was a gym in Hamilton, Joslin's MMA. I was about 15 years old, and I started kickboxing there, and I really like gravitated towards the kickboxing, the striking aspect of things. And uh, I stuck with it probably f- like 15 to about 17. Then I had a bit of like a hiatus for like a year where I was just like kind of hanging out with my friends being a 17-year-old. And then uh, when I was about 18, I got back into it. Like a friend of mine was like pursuing kickboxing and like was saying that he wanted to fight. And I'm like been doing this long enough on and off like it's something i'd want to do as well so i got back into it with him and the rest is history from there nice man and uh like i said in the intro josh the gentleman hill uh you know bellator superstar we had him on the podcast he's a great guy he said that you're the guy to look out for oh brady bunch is uh, falling down here we go and uh said that you're the guy to look out for and that you're like an up-and-coming rising star how cool is it to have you know, to be uh, managed by Sucker Punch, to have Josh Hill in your corner. How cool is it to have that relationship? Oh, for, for one, like Josh is more than like a coach manager to me. He's like an older brother. He's taking care of me for a lot. Like we've been together now for like six, seven years. Uh, he's, we went out to Team Alpha Male in California together. We've countless road trips to Montreal together to go out there to fight. And then him bringing me on to Sucker Punch was like a huge move in like my professional career, obviously, just to have those extra eyes on me. Ultimately, you need to win fights, you need to finish fights to kind of keep moving in the right direction. But it's a positive step being with Sucker Punch, you know, like just being on one of the biggest and best management companies in the game and being a part of that's a huge, huge milestone for me. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And we talk about it, right? Uh, Brady Bunch, we talk about like the importance of having like good management in your corner, especially like former fighters. That's like a huge thing we've been talking about. Without a doubt. Uh, I think it might be more important than uh, coaches sometimes to get you these opportunities and open doors. Yeah. Uh, What has been, I guess, my question as someone who, what do you think the biggest benefit has been to have? sucker punch behind you like how did things change once that happened 
I think just the notoriety that comes like with being with them is like a huge just step in the right direction. Like I said, you got to win fights, you got to finish fights, but when you win fights and finish fights, now you got them broadcasting it all over their social media. Like the right people are seeing it. It's like it's tough being a guy on a regional scene if like you don't have like these big names backing you. And obviously Josh has like been a huge part of my success in my career. So he's the one who brought me on into all of this and like it wouldn't have been possible without him. Yeah, yeah. And his nickname is the gentleman. And so obviously you're traveling all the all around the world with him. I mean, you know, two of us here, Liam, you and I, we're both Canadians, so we're yeah. very polite and proper. <laughs> it, does Josh uphold the Canadian gentleman vibe? Is, oh, is he yeah. a gentleman all the time or is it all a facade? No, he's probably one of the nicest guys going. <laughs> Everywhere, like the first few times we were going out to Team Alpha Male and stuff together too, like people, I swear, people didn't even know my name. They're just Josh Hill's guy. And I'm like, I was totally cool with that. Like, you know, I'll be Josh Hill's guy. Like, I have no problem with that. Yeah. And over the years, started to make more of my own name and come out of my shell a bit. But like him being a band and weight, me being a band and weight, and like just someone I've always looked up to even before, like I started, co like he started coaching me and training with him. It's just been a big influence in my career. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And uh, I heard that there's another guy that's normally at your fights or in your corner i looked it up i heard that his name is frank the tank <laughs> frank the tank uh, but it may not be this frank the tank who, who who's frank the tank liam uh maybe my cousin frank is that oh, like, okay. like if, 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 if that from woody is it what yeah. you saying saying that that's hilarious yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually his younger brother my other cousin mark sustak like we've literally played baseball together from child hockey together rep sports our whole life's growing up and then when i like, transitioned into mma i started bringing him into my corner more as like a good luck charm kind of thing like, you know if you're down at some point like you know it's nice to look over and see some family there like dig deep a little and then we just kept winning and winning and winning and not losing i'm like i'm very superstitious so i was like you're, you're staying in my corner you're not going anywhere <laughs> so, so yeah like, oh. but, Frank's his older brother, and Frank's a huge part. He's my my security. That's what I like to call him. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, that's awesome, man. It's so cool to have like family and stuff like that around you, right? And that's why it's nice to be able to fight on this regional circus that's close to home, because like you're in Hamilton, and and this fight at, with BTC is in Burlington. So it's nice that it's close, and you can have like a big uh, hometown crowd, right? But yeah, uh, I've always been pretty fortunate to have like a really good support system. Like obviously one from family, but just friends and uh just kind of, like i'm also a journey like well a journeyman steam fitter with local 67 in hamilton ontario like mm. i recently i for the last like year and a half have been full-time fighting but i also have a trade so like to have like a union full of guys back in me like that's there's been times when i fought for team canada kickboxing and stuff back then i was selling 200 tickets back then like for shows and that's awesome for this one for this one in burlington i sold around 200 tickets like i've always had a pretty good Damn. following nice man that's awesome uh yeah. Liam, you said a funny thing before we started that your opponent for this fight, I was saying like, is this another Canadian guy or are you going to be like the hometown hero? Your opponent lives next door to you? Yeah, like pretty, pretty <laughs> close. It's so funny. Like I've said this a few times in interviews. So like the fight got it like confirmed probably around like the seven week mark. So about seven weeks ago, roughly two months. And I'd say like maybe two weeks before that, we bumped into each other at uh, Shoppers Drug Mart. And like we didn't really say anything. We just kind of like looked at each other, gave a head nod and kept going. But uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like he literally, like he's, he said in an interview that he lives right behind Vision Quest. So yeah, small world. <laughs> it is, man. That's crazy. Uh, so your fight this Saturday, sorry, this Saturday, June the 20th. Yeah, sorry. Is it June 20th? Yeah, this sat. No, sorry. This Saturday, June 17th, BTC 20. Uh, if people want to watch this fight, how do they, is it, is it aired at all? Or is it yeah, only, there's you got to be there? He normally does a live stream for oh, like okay. a pay-per-view pay live stream for all their cards. So okay. I'm assuming that it's no different for this one. But uh, yeah, like I said, like with the, this fight being so close to home, a lot of my supporters are going to be in the crowd there. I feed off that energy. It's like, you don't want to, obviously you want to win every fight. You want to perform every fight. But when you have your family, friends, loved ones screaming your name, it makes you push a little harder. Uh, that's awesome, man. No, so excited for this fight. It's going to be awesome. I will I will do my best to catch it. As, as long as there's a live stream, for sure, I will watch it. Uh, Liam, I did want to talk to you about a few things that were in the news. Because you're a Canadian 
And because, again, like I said, we are the most polite people on earth, yeah. uh, Brady Bunch, present company may be excluded. You can, you're, you're a very nice person as well. Uh, I wanted to talk about a few things that happened in the news. Uh, Jim Miller fought a couple of weeks ago, has fought, I don't know, 180 times in the UFC. Yeah. And, and they were talking about how maybe he's going to go into the Hall of Fame, right, with all his accomplishments. Uh, his accomplishments here. I'll put it on the screen very quickly. I mean, we can't read them all out, but most wins in UFC, most bouts in UFC, most bouts in the lightweight division, most finishes in the lightweight division, blah, 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 right? Like tons and tons of accolades all over the place for this dude. And then Daniel Cormier comes out and he goes, I don't feel like time served immediately puts you in the Hall of Fame. He's got more wins than anyone else. I love him. And this makes it hard for me. But I just don't feel like time served puts you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one, DC. <laughs> the, yeah, all right. I don't I don't agree with that. Uh, first of all, I watched that Jim Miller fight and like couldn't have been any more perfect. Starched him in like 20 seconds or 15 seconds. And that's one of his fastest finishes. And they're saying he's got the most wins. He's got all these accolades. And. He just added another one to his own personal resume of his fastest finish. Like the guy's a legend in my eyes. It's crazy, right? Like uh, Brady Bunch, you're on the same wavelength. You Completely. Think? DC's being a hater. It's like, <laughs> why, why? You would say DC's won enough himself, right? Like, <laughs> from, well, uh, that, yeah, but that's the thing I was thinking. Like, it's like, you know, the, the, the saying is if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah. And I don't know why you would go off and disparage someone else getting into the Hall of Fame. Like, how does this negatively impact you at all? Who cares? They could yeah. they could induct everyone for all for all anybody cares. Like, just give him the honor. Why would you ever speak out and say something negative to like push someone down? And also, like, just considering like combat sports or just training in martial arts in general. Like, yo, anyone that I meet that's been training. Like, even just training at a gym for 10 years, I'm like, yo, props to you for, like, keeping that up and, like, making it your lifestyle. The fact yeah. that this guy is still making easy work of people, right? Like, come on. I think he definitely deserves a spot. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. What do you what do you think, Liam? Like, guarantee Jim Miller gets in? I'd say so. As far as, like, in my opinion, he's, like, an you know, OG's pushing – 40 years old and still taking out top prospects like with ease like that says something in itself that the guy's still there he can still hang with the best and like i know he was saying ufc like 300 was kind of going to be his thing and then he was looking but like i even read somewhere that he's like he wants to go past that now like and why wouldn't <laughs> you? you keep having the success keep breaking records setting your own personal records like why not go yeah like it fall off yeah, and we've talked about it before on the podcast. I think Brady Bunch, when you were you were here, we talked about it. But like, I find it weird when um, people that work for the UFC, like as DC does, right, as a commentator and whatever, when he goes off into his own personal podcast, where I think is where he said that statement, I still feel like you shouldn't be able to talk shit about <laughs> about like company people, like. Him doing it on his own podcast, people are going to go, oh, well, that's his own time. He's allowed to do his own thing. But we all know that the dude is a UFC guy. Like, he's he's a UFC corporate man. I, I, I feel like wherever you go, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be talking badly about UFC fighters like that. Like, if you truly hate the guy, sure, maybe that's okay. Even still, I'm a little bit bad. But I feel like you shouldn't be talking bad about, like, your own company on your own time. No, not especially not someone with as many achievements as Jim Miller. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's not like we're saying we're going to induct CM Punk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which I, which hey, CM Punk's pretty awesome. <laughs> but yeah. you know, but like if they were doing something silly like that, okay, maybe you can you can talk. But like when you're a company man, it seems weird that you're going to say that. Um, um, of all the promotions that are out there with all the stuff going on with like all the different promotions, PFL and all their stuff they're doing with Jake Paul, uh, with one FC being, being huge. And then you've got, you know, UFC obviously, but they're doing the power slap stuff or some weird stuff themselves for you as a young man going into this sport. If you had to pick, do you have a favorite that you want to end up at? Uh, honestly, like I'm pretty open. Like it, the end of the day it's a job and you're looking to make a career right so right. if you get offered more money 
with Bellator than you do with the UFC or you get more with PFL. Like I think from a career standpoint, that's like the way to go. But obviously the UFC has the most notoriety in North America. That's how you build your own personal brand, the biggest. But I was actually just out in Thailand for the start of January and February for two months. And when I was out there, like one FC is huge. Yeah. And like, mind you, you have to have some connections out there to get signed out there and stuff. But like, that's a massive organization. I read on the internet too that like throughout the world for sports, like one FC is above the NFL, the NHL, the MLB. They get more viewership than all of it. Yeah. So it's all just how you look at it. The North American scene is obviously the UFC end all be all. And I know guys that are like that that have opportunities to be signed elsewhere and want to be with the UFC. I mean, there's nothing against that. I have no problem with it. But the end of the day, I'm looking to make a career out of this. I love it. I want this to be my job. So, and he's he needs financial backing as well. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly it, man. Uh, I I like I I feel like you know you got to go where the money is. Yep. Um, and then depending on how you want to kind of change your change your life and what you want to do, whether that whether that social media exposure is really what the UFC is going to give you, but I mean, s- sky's the limit for you, my friend. I mean, I mean, off you go. We're very excited for your fight. We thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, oh, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we want to have you back as well. So for sure, like as you continue in your career, see, we, we make friends with you now while you're like in the beginning stages so that when you're a UFC champion, you don't ignore us like no, Pena. Of and, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one question I want to ask you before we let you go, it's a question that uh, my mom used to ask me as a child growing up. And I want to ask you and see what your answer is. Uh, Liam Gallagher, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? I'm a pretty happy person. Uh, maybe this week, being a little dehydrated and hungry, I'm not as happy. Yeah. But I'd say pretty consistently, I'm about a 9 or a 10. Oh, my, nice. girlfriend, my girlfriend might say differently this week but <laughs> <laughs> because of the weight cut. But other than that, no, I'm a pretty happy guy. I, I love what I do. The, the fact that I get to train twice a day, every day, Lit, like chase my dream like i can't ask for anything more that's awesome man that's so cool and i love that you have a career to back yeah, you up yeah i have i have a fallback as well obviously that like, you know it's that was something that was, thank my dad and my parents for that one that's something that i came i was 18 i was like oh i'm just gonna fight and i was like no nah, no you're not you're gonna get a trade as well <laughs> so no, that's awesome. And it's not it's not to fall back on. It's so that when your career is over, right, like everybody's career is going to end at some point, but then you have something else to do after, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, aside from be a superstar and then just go around and teach seminars or whatever. Yeah, I, do. I, that, that's fingers crossed. Yeah. Perfect world. That's what happens. But yeah, yeah. Uh, before we do let you go, is there anything that you wanted to say to fans, viewers or listeners of the podcast? Uh, just obviously shout out Josh Hill being my main man, helping me through everything. Uh, Lyndon Whitlock, another great coach of mine, just the constant support I have from all these people in my corner. Like it's not possible without them. Fans, family can't do this without them. It's as much as it's an individual support, uh, sport, you need that backing, you need that support system. And I couldn't be thankful enough for the people I got in my life. That's awesome, man. So well spoken, this young man. Yeah, uh, Brady, but Brady, much anything you want to say before we let him go? No, I'm just really uh, happy for you in the sense of like I've done some silly fights, uh, and I know how hard it is to sell tickets or get like real support from my closest friends sometimes or family, uh, right? And those that show up for me, like it means the world. I get that, and also like fighting with the home crowd hearing my buddies like it's a completely different vibe so i'm really happy to hear you're able to consistently sell 200 tickets where some former champs can't even like sell that many tickets uh at certain venues so like props to you i agree well spoken uh i guess my one question for you is this i'm a big fan of the bare knuckle stuff and i hear you're gonna go like the other direction mma all that but any interest in possibly doing some bare knuckle stuff? Oh, absolutely! Like, absolutely, I'd be crazy to say if I if I wasn't interested. I'm a fighter through and through. The reason why I got into it is because I love to fight, and uh, nothing more pure than a little bare, bare knuckle boxing. That's for sure. Right. All right. That's all. <laughs> Liam, would you have to ask your girlfriend's permission? Uh, I don't know. Maybe bare- depending on how. 
if I told her, oh, I promise I'll try not to get too beat up. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because because, you know, for, for those on audio, like Liam's a handsome dude. And those bare knuckle, man, you get you get cut up and scratched up everywhere. I don't know. I feel I just... like you're almost guaranteed a broken hand or orbital bone. Those are those are one of the two that <laughs> seem to be going quite a bit in bare knuckle. But yeah. I don't know. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's, I'm a fighter. I like to fight. If I wasn't fighting in a cage, who knows what I'd be doing? So <laughs> might, might as well do it for money and for fame and success and just because I love it. Uh, that's awesome, man. Well, good luck to you. Good luck this week. Thank you so much for taking time out of fight week to come see us. You know, we we appreciate your time and, and we hope that your 200 plus people in the stands are going to be cheering and super happy for your success. We'll be cheering for you and uh, we'll we'll keep track of you and uh, we'll talk to you again in the future. Awesome. I, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Liam. Keep up the great work, man. See you yeah. later. Take Bye-bye. care. All oh. right. That's our man, Liam. God dang, what a good dude. And I forgot to say, but uh, his Instagram, if you uh, are looking for him, he's at Gallagher.97. I'm assuming that's the year of his birth. So it's Gallagher.97. And uh, we're going to go on to our next guest. All right. Brady Bunch. So our next guest, this is our second guest of the podcast. We normally don't have two guests, so this is fun. Our second guest today, he's currently competing in season two of Road to UFC Asia. He advanced to the semifinals with a dominant victory last month. He's training at AKA with Kane Velasquez and all those other uh, champs over there. He is my bet to win the whole thing. He's got a record of nine and one. We were shouting out his praises the other day while we were recording the podcast. And while we were recording, he messages saying that he will come on. So we're so excited that he's going to show up. Here he is, true to his word. Everybody, please welcome to the podcast, Mark Clamaco. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Mark, what's going on, my friend? Nothing much. Just chilling, uh, you know, getting back into the swing of things and training and everything and you know slowly starting to get ready for the next one i still got my eyes on the prize i was happy to get that win but you know like i said um when they interviewed me after the fight i said you know the job's not finished i still got work to do so staying focused staying yeah focused man important. And, and you are outside is this beautiful california in your background yes sir yes sir good you you lucky yeah, bastard yeah. i'm <laughs> very I'm jealous trust. Yeah, very nice. Mark, uh, okay, the reason why I especially wanted to have you on, man, is because you're in UFC Road to Asia. Can you explain to people what is UFC Road to, A- or Road to UFC Asia? What is it? So it's pretty much a, a tournament format competition that the UFC put together to try to um, expand on their Asian market. And um, so they, they're doing another... Essentially a form of, you know, it's same, similar to like the Tender Series type deal or uh, the Ultimate Fighter type deal. But it's a different format. It's a three fight, turn. Uh, it's an eight man tournament. So three fights over the span. Of, I think it should be finished by this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they just pretty much look for prospects out of Asia at flyweight, at uh, bantamweight, I think featherweight and lightweight. Yeah. And um I wasn't born in, in the Philippines. I'm representing the Philippines by both of my parents. My, my heritage comes from there, and uh, I proudly represent that. But uh, luckily, even I think I'm the only one that was in the tournament, actually, that's actually born in the U.S. So I'm happy I'm still able to get in, and my heritage was enough for me to get in, get the opportunity to, <laughs> yeah, get the opportunity to fight there and get my name exposed to the to the asian market i think that'll be very big for my career uh with my knowing with my background and everything i think that'll be a great place to you know get some good fans and good exposure so happy to be a part of it yeah man like uh that 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 okay that was my next question did you lie on your resume to get in no no i mean <laughs> I, 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 you could you could tell you could, i didn't tell them that uh I was I didn't lie or say that I was born in the Philippines, but I guess they felt the same that, you know, my heritage is enough. I, I am, yeah. you know, and I mean, I, even though I was born in the U.S., I'm happy that I was still able to get on. I think they still I'm happy that they still uh, considered me a candidate for for being on on that um, road to UFC Asia. 
Yeah, like this is a massive opportunity for you, man. And I am so happy for you. Um, Thank you. I did want to ask, is are you, I, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but are you also competing in Road to One? Because there's this Clamaco. So that's my that's, that's my old, older brother. Oh, uh, I, I thought you were shaving your head, running <laughs> over to Road to One, kicking ass over there. Your yeah. brother, this is crazy. You're in Road to UFC Asia, and your yeah. brother at the same time is in Road to One, and you've both won your first fights. So he won his first fight actually back in March. Yeah. So uh, he had his first fight back in March. Also, same thing, same format. It's an eight-man tournament, three fights over the span of a year. Um, he's He won his first fight back in March. I won my first fight in May, end of May, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And then last weekend was his semifinal uh, for his tournament, and he won. So he's on to the finals, and now I got my semis coming up in August. And then two weeks after that, his finals will be uh, in September. So, it's it, yeah, it's really crazy the way – the way it lined up for, for both of us, uh, you know, I've always been focused on MMA and, you know, he started out with MMA with me and now, you know, I, um, over time he kind of just started focusing on primarily on the Muay Thai and it, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy that, you know, we're both on the same trajectory uh, to get to where we want to go, where, where we want to be at the highest level competing for our, uh, for our sports, for our That's different fun. sports. Mark, it's, it's freaking insane. It's got to be like history in the making with two guys, brothers, going off to the to the peak of their sport. Sorry, Brady Bunch. Yeah, I'm just wondering, is there any playful or not playful like sibling <laughs> rivalry that goes on between you two? Or like, what are your parents' opinions about it all? Like, uh, Our parents, thankfully, both of our parents are very supportive of, of uh, our career choice and they, they really back us in everything that we do. So thankfully we got a good support system. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we have, we have our, uh, we have our uh, rivalry in the gym, but other than that, it's all love. You know, we both want each other to get, we both are just pushing each other to be the best that we can be. We've always been able to rub off on each other and pick things up uh, from each other and really elevate our, our games together. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, and, Obviously, we do get to train in the gym a little bit, and that's awesome. Yeah, it I take times. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Uh, you both, I definitely will say, you both have good style. Like Mark, I don't know it. it to me, it's important as as a young up and coming fighter, you got to have like a good look. You got to have good style because marketability is such a big thing too. Yeah. So out out you come like you look like kind of like Shang Tsung looking. You know, kind of <laughs> badass, right? Uh, I want to ask, the tattoo on your shoulder, I can't figure out what that is. It's like writing across the side. So, what is that? So it's a, it's a Filipino writing. So it's called Babayan. It's a Filipino type of script. And uh, oh. it, it pretty much just means one love. Awesome. Nice. Very, yeah. very cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, why you can't really see what it is because it's like a, it is a Filipino script. Oh, that's awesome, man. Very, very cool. And uh, and so between you and your brother, is there any, because, you know, he's got the cool shaved head, but you've got the cool flowing long locks. Is there, a, is there any uh, battle between the brothers with this hairstyle? What's going on? <laughs> uh, we always say, people always say, yeah, one, one, one's got long hair, one's got shaved head. Um, yeah, you can't have it all. He's a little bit taller. I'm a little bit shorter. <laughs> he hits a little bit harder. He definitely hits harder. He, he got those. He got those genes. So, I guess we split it up in terms of different uh, genetics that we got, <laughs> genetic gifts that we got. No, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Uh, now, the guy that you beat in in the first episode, uh, where uh, your first fight. He seemed to be like a very highly touted prospect. He was a cocky dude. He was coming in. He's 17, I think he was. Was he 17 uh, 20. or 8? Or 20? Okay. But really young dude, really highly touted. Uh, did you know a lot about this guy? Were you intimidated? I mean, you're training um, with Cain Velasquez, so I'm sure you're not too intimidated by yeah, anybody. I've been around some of the best fighters like 
like in the world and um i i just i just always uh that experience always helps me like in a lot of these fights and uh i bet for sure i knew that i knew going in that you know he's the best in his area he's coming you know i always i always was telling everybody that everyone in the tournament you know we're all we're all gonna be hungry the same way we're all it's high stakes for everybody. The opportunity is huge. So everyone that I fight, they're going to fight to their absolute best because of where we're at and where we're trying to get to. So I always expect that from my opponent and I expected that from him. So um, I always prepare myself for the best fight, the toughest fight, and that, you know, prepare myself for the worst case scenarios. Yeah. Um, when, <laughs> when you, okay. I had a, I had a few bones to pick with Road to UFC Asia. The commentators are not on site. Yeah, that right? was different. Yeah, yeah. Like that's it's kind of weird that they're not on site. But Mark, they send poor Alan Jobang all alone. <laughs> yeah, like they send this one guy out there. I don't know why he couldn't bring a friend and just commentate. Was he? Was he very happy to see another English person speaking in you, Mark? <laughs> well, luckily, a lot of the UFC staff overall was 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 there. So, like, they had like people from PI that came, and all the staff. So even for us, for us, us being English speakers <laughs> in China, it was good for us too. Just just to know that, like, all right, we're here with the staff. Like, the staff here speaks English. Even the staff that uh, the, the 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 Chinese staff that they have, they also spoke English. So. I'm sure Alan also, yeah, he felt he felt comfortable too because we had like the head of PT, Heather Linden was there, so like, ah, uh, okay, it, it was cool. It, it was it, it it was a cool experience because it really did feel like, although it's not exactly the UFC, it felt like pretty much a UFC event with all the staff being there and all the accommodations that we got all week. Uh, yeah, it was really really good experience. Nice man, and I did and I did want to ask about that because okay, and I don't want to get you in trouble. Just blink twice, if. You know, if you're lying, but okay, I already asked you if you cheated to get in because you're you're living in America, man. But so when they allow you to come in, were they like, God damn, we gotta fly this dude across the whole world? Like we thought everyone was gonna be like taking a train to this event, and here you are. So you're a young guy, right? Making your debut with UFC or trying to get into the UFC. How many people did they like allow you to fly over? Like how does that work financially for you? Because that's that's not cheap. Yeah. Um. So they took care of me and my cornerman. Nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. And then for you the get a flight and for the for the um for our stay. So nice. nice. Damn. That's, cool. that's good. Yeah. Okay. That's really cool, man. I'm happy for you because I was worried that they're like, no, no, no. You for the opportunity, you pay your own way. And I'd be yeah, like, no, oh, no. Luck luckily, yeah, yeah. Luckily, um. The accommodations that uh, they provided were very good, and uh, I didn't really. I would say I really spent too much money out there. Um, pretty much, yeah, I made okay. money. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> left left on a positive, not no negative, right? That's all. Yeah, good. yeah. No, nice. Uh, I got a fan question that I had to ask. Uh, this is from it's Buddha Chris Trick, and the question is, and I'll read it in how I think he wants me to read it. Do you know how to kaboob smash? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I, do. I train that. Yep. Yeah. So your so your smashing is good. I can smash. <laughs> nice, nice, good. Uh, what is the? I mean, obviously, I think I know, but is there a specific prize you win when you win Road to UFC Asia? um so we get the contract you get a, okay. I believe um five fight contract with usc nice. okay cool man and, I'm, and I'm happy with with i'm happy with how it looks too so yeah nice nice and uh last season of road to ufc asia the finals was supposed to be in south korea it was supposed to be um korean zombies I, I guess retirement fight. He was going to headline it, whatever. Then it all fell apart, and then they ended up doing it in the stupid apex, which I hate. Mm -hmm. Mark, uh, do they know where your finals is going to be? Um, I don't believe they have that locked in yet. 
No, but it's got to be Asia, right? The whole point think, of this. Yeah, yeah. Is, I think I think the goal is for all the fights to be in Asia this year. Nice, nice. And so the yeah, they've got to be trying to line up some big Asian headlining fight in Asia somewhere so that the finals mm -hmm. can be like in a nice, cool stadium. Yeah. Something big, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome, awesome. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, if the finals for the road to Asia. Uh, sorry, I keep saying Road to Asia. If the finals for Road to UFC Asia and the finals for Road to One is on at the exact same day and time, where do your parents go? <laughs> well, my brother's fights are in New York, so it'll be no, 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 no. Oh, what? They're not going to make the the flight for you. I mean, no, it's no. a it's shorter you, trip, less money too, so. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset about it. It's a little <laughs> bit tougher to go. Uh, I mean, unless they want to take, they want to use that to take a trip back home too. Yeah, that's see. also an upside to it. But I think my brother's finals are in. I think it's confirmed that his finals are two weeks after my semifinals. So. Oh, okay. 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 So I'll be able to. He can't. Unfortunately, he can't. Uh, he hasn't been able to. He wasn't able to come to my quarters, my last fight. And he won't be able to make it to my semifinals just because it's so close to his fight. So, right, right. yeah, unfortunately, like, I haven't had him in my corner. Or I won't have him in my corner for these two fights, which I'm used to. But um, he'll be able to come to my finals just like right. I'll be for his finals. So, most important, we'll, we'll, we'll all be together. It's going to be crazy, man. It's it's so awesome. Um, Brady Bunch, is there anything that you wanted to ask? Uh, I'm trying to think. What Out of curiosity, what are the... We know one FC is big out there. We know the UFC is trying to grow. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the two biggest organizations in Asia at the moment for any combat sport? Like the most popular? Most popular in Asia? Yeah. I would say probably, probably one, one is definitely going to, you have to say, you have to say one is up there is number yeah, one yeah. In, for sure. And then um i mean from there I, I mean you could say ryzen but it's it's primarily in japan right so um it's it's either either from there it's either ryzen or or ufc whenever ufc is going to be big you know wherever they go they can they can they can make an impact wherever they want to so um i think it's yeah for for sure number one i would say is one for for that for that continent and how popular is the bare knuckle out there? Is that growing? I I have no idea. I'm sure there's people fighting bare knuckle out there. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just gotta go find the underground. You gotta find those underground stadiums. Like you go to a convenience store and then you go to their basement, and they're fighting bare knuckle in there, man. I think they had a bare knuckle event. Oh, they were trying to do it in Thailand. I'm not sure. If yeah, they, they were yeah, trying yeah. to. They were trying to have uh, Buakal and, and Sanchai fight each other bare knuckle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. think it's rumored it might be happening in November. We will see. Yeah. That, I mean, if, if yeah, that, that'll be huge for, for, for bare knuckle in Asia for sure. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Mark, being uh, a Filipino fighter representing the Philippines for Road to, for road to UFC Asia, um, have you become a bigger filipino star like has has the filipino people started coming in droves to support you now it's definitely starting i'm definitely noticing it a little bit more um it just uh, helps because they, they set it up for me to do some interviews with philippine media in the lead up to the fight so i definitely feel it growing um i definitely see a lot of you know they're putting me up in a lot of more news articles and Philippine news sports uh Philippine sports news and stuff like that so for sure it's growing and yeah I, I, uh, I look forward to to building my name there and becoming a good Filipino star uh you know carrying the flag representing Philippines in the UFC yeah that's crazy man so for those that uh for those that don't know that are watching this podcast now when I began this podcast my co-host was a Filipino guy and okay. so, so we were huge into doing as much Filipino stuff as we could, which actually I, I do want to say happy Filipino Independence Day, which was yesterday. Mm. So that was something. Um, but yeah, yeah like, yesterday. you know, yeah, you. And we, yeah. And we celebrate, uh, sorry. And we had on, uh, uh, oh my gosh, Denise Zamboanga, 
huge star for one FC in the Philippines. We mm. had, um, Jenlyn Olsom, uh, who's also a big one FC Filipino star. So we've had on, you know, like all these Filipino and we actually, our podcast was on uh, Filipino TV across Canada for like six months. We, we did a sports show for them as well. Nice. And so, you know, being part of that, I know how passionate the Filipino community mm -hmm. is to get yep. behind their stars and stuff yep, like yep. that. Right. So like, man, you have the opportunity to just massively grow. Yeah. You know, a, a, as, as a homegrown star, as a Filipino star. Oh, we had, uh, the Filipino wrecking ball, uh, Mark Munoz. Mark Munoz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we probably, had. The, probably the biggest star for the in the ufc that we had uh i would say I, yeah I yeah we had him on the podcast we ate lumpia with him live on the podcast that was <laughs> that was huge uh yeah but mark man crazy opportunity for you this this future and where you're headed like to be a part of this i feel is amazing again i think alan jobin is really happy that you're there because, uh, <laughs> when he interviews you he doesn't have to go through like 10 minutes of uh translation <laughs> like that was really awkward funny is they they did his questions but they didn't translate my answers <laughs> I, mark you know mark you know why because that poor translator i mean it was so confusing for them when they would have to like translate three yeah, times yeah they had there was like so many different languages being spoke like even throughout fight week when we're we're out doing we're like they're getting the fighters all together for the weigh-ins and stuff and they're trying to speak they're speaking English and then they're speaking Chinese and then, you know, there's Koreans in the room that don't speak anything. There's Indonesians that don't speak anything, Indians. And yeah, yeah. It, it was crazy. Cause yeah, there's just <laughs> in one room that like, even, even when we're cutting weight, we're cutting weight in the sauna and there's like, yeah, same thing. Me and my boy are talking to each other. It's like, we don't have to worry. Nobody understands each other here. They, <laughs> they could be talking about us. We could be talking about them. No one's going to know. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you're just talking about oh, your whole strategy in the in the locker room doesn't matter. No one knows. Uh, yeah, no. But Mark, congratulations, man. I do have one question I want to ask you before we let you go. Uh, it's a question that my mom used to ask me growing up all the time. And so I want to ask it to you on a scale of one to 10. How happy are you? Wow, that's a really good question. I would say I'm a good eight. Okay. I'd say I'm pretty happy, but I know that there's more things ahead of me in life that, that will make me even happier. And I think, yeah, I think that's a good place to stay at just because you don't want to always be at 10. You want to be able to be at eight, come back to seven. And obviously there's times where you will come down to uh, lower, lower on that scale. So I'd say like right now I'm at a good eight. I wouldn't say I'm at, I'm at, all the way up and you know i'll i'll probably never be at a 10 all the time like it, it's that'll be if you're on a scale of 10 of happiness i feel like that's always going to be short-lived just like how if you find yourself on a three scale three on that scale it's also short-lived so um one of the things that my friend has always told me one of my good friends has always said that like you know you you, you um when it comes to good feelings or bad feelings, happy days, sad days, it's like this too shall pass. Like, and I always try to apply that. Like, even if I'm down, sad, this will pass. If I'm happy, this will also pass and, and it'll, you know, so I think I'm going to get a good eight and, you know, I'm, I feel like that's a good level for me to be at seven, eight. And uh, obviously we can have experiences when we're getting to 10 and you know we're going down a little bit sometimes but if you can find yourself at a good seven or eight you know i think that's that's a good place to be at i agree mark that's a great answer man my friend uh you know we've been asking people this question now for a good couple months now brady much we've, we've asked quite a few people that's a really good question yeah yeah, thank you. And um, I really appreciate that you take the time to expand upon it and, and you thought about it for a while. So I really appreciate that. I love getting people's answers and, and just seeing how different mm -hmm. people react to it. Um, mm -hmm. Mark, before we let you go, is there anything that you wanted to say to the fans, viewers, or listeners of the podcast? Uh, just thank you for all the support, everyone that has my back. Um, you know, I feel, I feel very blessed to have the support I have. Thank you to everyone that, you know, supports me 
uh, whether it's just, you know, through messages, kind kind uh, words of encouragement and the people that actually are uh, actively supporting me around me, you know, my family, my teammates, my coaches at the gym, my girlfriend, my brother, everybody, you know, everybody that uh, puts a lot of time in and a lot of care into me that, you know, I wouldn't be able to succeed um, the way I am without them. So just thank you to everybody that, that has my back. It's awesome, Mark. And I, I do want to put, I did have a picture of you and your brother together. So there you are. I, Mark, I did know that you weren't uh, the same person. So <laughs> you can see there. Brady Bunch, is there anything that you wanted to say before we let him go? No, just, uh, I think it's awesome what you're doing. I'm going to definitely, I, at the gym I train out of, there's a lot of uh, Filipino Americans there. Okay, in nice. fact, some of them have their cousins visiting at the moment that are training at the gym. But I'm going to introduce them all to you because I think they'll be inspired by you. Uh, so I just keep that. kicking ass, keep being a badass. And I've really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you guys at in Canada? So, so uh, I'm Long Island, actually. Oh, OK. We were just, right? in, we were just in New York last last weekend. Nice. Yeah. No, for the for, uh, was your brother. Did your brother fight in New York? Yeah. Warriors Cup. Yeah. So nice. some. Some of my uh, amateur buddies are like competing in the, some of those tournaments. Uh, oh, nice, nice. So yeah, yeah, that's where I saw he won, and I was like, "Wait a second, it has to be related, right?" <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So the timing was pretty cool. And I, if he's fighting in New York again, uh, I will probably be there in person. Yeah, yeah. yeah come check it out. Yeah, we'll be there September, I think, ninth. So. All right, no doubt. So guess what? You'll probably see me and. Uh, the two gyms I train out of, though I'm jumping to one. Uh, okay, nice. But it would be nice to meet you. If I get a pick with you and your bro, no pressure. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah. honestly, I'm a fan of you both now. Thank yeah, you. yeah. And I'm out. I'm out in Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Toronto. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have uh, I have some family in uh, Edmonton. Oh, nice, nice, cool. Yeah, man. I went there like 2009, 2010, a while ago. But nice, it was nice. nice. Well, yeah. we, we appreciate your patronage, Mark. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Mark, it was a ple absolute pleasure to meet you, man. I'm so happy. Dude, it was so crazy that day we were filming the podcast, and I was like, fuck, I really want this guy Mark on the podcast. And then my thing, ding, and that was you saying you're going to come on. You guys were filming, huh? It was perfect. So I was so happy, Mark. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I, I do hope uh, we get to speak to your brother one day as well. So yeah. I'll reach out to him. Tell tell him that we're that we're cool people, that we're okay to come on. Yeah. And, uh, Mark, all the best to you, man. Forever, we will be fans of yours. We will we will uh, spread the word about how great you're doing, and we will follow your career. Uh, we'll talk about your fights all the time, and hopefully one day we'll get you back on the podcast again, my friend. Yeah, let's do it for sure. Thank you, all guys. Right. Thanks, Mark. All the best, my friend. Take care. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. What a freaking cool dude, man. I knew it. I knew this guy was the best. I'm telling you, this is, this is my new, this is my new uh, future prospect for the UFC. This dude's going to win this freaking tournament. Uh, Alan Jobin is not going to have to worry about a, a 500, you know, second delay <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in the comments. Uh, I love him, man. I think this guy's going to do it. He's, he's training with the best he's training at AKA and, uh, no offense, but when you get to one of those like world beater gyms like that, and then, and then you're going over and fighting against these other guys, I feel like he has an, an edge. He's got an opportunity. He's got the mental composure. You can see what a cool dude this guy is. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, this this dude's got it, man. Living in California, son of a gun. So beautiful it's, there. It's in his genes, too. All right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, great dude, man. Uh, so, guys, that that's, you know, two guests in a row we did. We've never done that before. I don't think we have, right? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, if you're here because of either of our guests, the wonderful Liam Gallagher or Mark Clamaco, uh, please do follow us and subscribe. you got all the stuff down there. Um, we'll leave all their information in the show notes. And I didn't say it while he was on, I really got to get better at this, but, uh, Mark Clamaco is at Mark, M-A-R-K-C-L-I-M-A-C-O at Mark Clamaco. That's where he is on Instagram. So go follow him and support this dude. Uh, man, both the, both the people we had today, good, good, good people. Um, Brady Bunch, what do you got going on? Anything exciting? Uh, let me try to think, uh, one cool positive is I think I, I've told you dating a, a girl. It's been going well. Uh, is now she literally was writing to me, t 
telling me about the hundreds of dollars of Muay Thai gear she's buying. Oh, nice, nice, good, yeah. So what's really nice is I now have someone in my life that is reminding me of all my weaknesses in kickboxing <laughs> and boxing, uh, but yeah. I've really been enjoying it. So there's some positive to that. Uh, yeah. I know that I'm a little embarrassed. Rough and Rowdy, I think, officially posted the fight video yesterday. Oh, is it there? Okay. On YouTube. Yeah. Some hateful comments, whatever. I'm completely embarrassed in myself, yet I'm more motivated than ever uh, because a big factor of that, just looking at that video, I I put on too much size, too much weight. I clearly it turned into like us just being a brawl, help neither of us, like really using right. the skills we got. Uh, but I'm walking around, naturally waking up each morning at the weight that I was dying to cut to the week of my fight. So I'm back nice. where I was supposed to be. Right. I'm a little upset at celebrity boxing for making it where I had to go up and wait for my last fight. Uh, but no, I'm back to the six days a week. Uh, as you know, I may have some bare knuckle related news coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still in talks to maybe have a kickboxing match in August. Uh, nice. And I'm also going to plug my one of my coaches is fighting. Two of my coaches are fighting uh, next weekend in Westchester. So I'll probably be talking about that on the next podcast. But I'm going to be going, filming some content. Nice, uh, nice. There you go. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I'm, I'm good. How have you nice. been? Tim? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, no, and I so I do want to say it is so nice when, like you're saying, like with your girlfriend, you're able to train together. Uh, Mark has his brother to train with, right? Uh, you heard Liam say that Josh Gentleman Hill is like a brother to him. It's so important when you have those good connections and you're able to train. I remember when I started training, I had uh, this one guy that I trained with all the time. His name was Seon. And we, you know, were at every class together. We were always partners, right? Like we we trained hard together. We We grew into the sport together. You know what I mean? Pass our tests for Muay Thai together. It makes a million miles of a difference when you can have someone that's there with you, supporting you. Doesn't have to be as good as you. Doesn't have to be way worse than you. Better. It doesn't matter. It's just that the the mental aspect of having a friend there in your training yeah. is huge. Because I go I go to my gym now and I see some guys that like when they're like, all right, everybody partner up, and then you see some guys just go. You know, and like no freaking clue. Like they don't know anybody. They don't have a regular partner. It's just, it's so different, you know? And I'm like, well, oh, that experience must be so different than the one that I had yes. when like, you know, all the time, like that's your partner. And I remember, and then sometimes he wouldn't be there and I'd have a different partner. But the minute that guy was there, I remember there was this other kid, Laren. And uh, if my partner was there, he would go, oh, okay, Tim, I can't be your partner today. Right. Cause you're going with Sam. I'm like, yeah, that's my partner, man. Like, <laughs> so uh yeah but you know yeah uh for me life yeah life is pretty good man i don't know yeah it's okay i got a new kitten so for those that might look on our instagram every now and then i may post my new kitten evie uh so she's keeping me up and uh yeah i think life is good i'm a little bit injured right now from training or old age i don't know what the hell it is like jim miller fucking what is he 40 yeah no. or, or maybe even 41 he's, he's older right i'll tell you the second I hit 40, it's game over. Like your body just psh, like just does not heal anymore, doesn't recover. Like I don't know what Jim Miller does. And you know that he's uh watched by USADA and all that. So like his accomplishments are insane to to still be doing what he's doing. I know we talked about it briefly, but yeah, yeah crazy. Um for the podcast, we I, I don't have next week's guest lined up just yet. I have one guest who uh, said he needed until like the weekend to be able to figure out if he can come on next week. Uh, hopefully he will come. If not, I have another guest kind of prepped and ready to go. And so hopefully those two guests in the next two weeks, we'll get both of them on and we'll see. Uh, there's another dude and I, I apologize. I won't be able to say his name properly. Jui, Juji brand or Judy brand. Uh, the dude's an artist and he, uh, he trains, but he also writes a comic book called scrap S K R A P. And it's about MMA. It's a comic book that he does and he releases it over Kickstarter. I know he's got a new Kickstarter campaign coming up 
And uh, so the minute he releases that Kickstarter campaign, we'll get him on as well to kind of like talk about his, his comic book and stuff like that. It's pretty kick-ass. Like it's that is cool. very cool. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. Aside from that, it's been a slow news cycle for these last two weeks, really. It's been pretty slow. Uh, not really much to talk about. The only thing I guess was the Juliana Pena. Um, yeah. Did you catch her interview on MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani? <laughs> or did I've you only see seen the I've clips? seen like the, the highlights, yeah. Yeah. Um, God damn, I really like her. I really do like her. She talks a bunch of shit. She is committed to her to her character. And I don't think it's a character, like, but she's just committed to being super positive, super focused, super confident. I know people hate her. God, God, like even on her own account when she posts something, it's just flooded with hate. Yes. You know, like people really go in to hate her. I don't know if it's because of her look as well, because she's a very good looking girl. She's always done up, like I said before, you know, she's always she's always presenting herself well. But boy, her cockiness rubs people the wrong way. Yes. But she's the only person with charisma in that division now. Like you've got the Bantamweights and you've got kick ass people, you've got cool ass fighters, you've got cool people, great people. But the only one that's going to bring any kind of drama to the mic is Juliana Pena. So I don't know. Maybe it's time for some new fresh, fresh blood coming in. Yeah. Yeah. But you need fresh blood to come in and be able to make a statement and be able to kick ass and get to that level. I think they're out there. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. I think actually Amanda leaving is a sign of like, the next wave will be coming soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I do hope so. But I do. I mean, it's I'm going to be torn to death when it's Juliana versus Raquel Pennington, because anybody that knows me knows Raquel Pennington is one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Uh, she was the first female fighter to ever be on our podcast. Uh, love her to bits. But geez, Louise, Juliana versus Raquel. That's a that's a tough fight to pick. That's a tough fight. And I feel like they're very evenly matched. I feel like that's a really good fight. Like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like people are, I've seen a lot of hate towards Raquel uh, as well. Really? Yeah, I've seen For- a lot of people like, oh, is, look how weak this division is, that oh. this is who like the closest contender is and all that stuff, right? Um, That's That said, Raquel would murder every one of those commenters. Yes, without a doubt. Raquel is tough as shit. Yes. You know, you know what? Actually, that's what one of them actually said, though. I remember they're like, no offense to her. She's as tough as they come, but, and then they tried claiming she wasn't skilled enough. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know what? It's because she's a brawler, right? It's because if you were to classify her, she's not a Muay Thai expert. She's not a wrestler. She's not a, a, a kickboxer. She's just a freaking brawler. And she just fights with grit and determination and she's, and she's yeah. strong as shit, but that's very similar to Juliana, right? Like they're just, it's like a Misha Tate, like, you're just a good fighter all around, but you're not a specialist. And so I think people downplay how 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 good they are or like how impactful they can be. That's true. But yeah. Uh, what what do you think is gonna happen to the other weight class? I mean, I know our good friend Chelsea Chandler is, you know, is has been promoting that, you know, after her fight, they want to take on the win uh in her fight, she's saying that the winner of her fight then fights Jermaine Durandamy uh, for the title. Is she still around? <laughs> you know, as I'm saying it out of my head, I'm like, wait, I thought she retired. Who knows? Wait, but who retired? Maybe they're, maybe they're going to bring her back just to make it happen. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think Chelsea Chandler can make bantamweight, right? Yeah. If she can make bantamweight, I think she needs to go to bantamweight. The featherweight division will not last. I really don't think so. Like it, that's tough for that for that division to last. See, but you know what? Maybe they could bring Cyborg back. <laughs> Cyborg is busy boxing. She's busy doing whatever the hell she's gonna do. I don't. But even still, you bring Cyborg back. I mean, she's getting up there in age too. So she like okay. So she fights a couple fights, and then what would she do? And then if you beat her, that's even worse. 
Kayla Kay- Harrison. I don't know. Okay. Kayla Harrison's never coming, first of all. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, very excited. We were, uh, oh, friends of the podcast update. Let me just do that before we get out of here. Friends of the podcast update. What do I have? Bow, 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 bow. Uh, Rageworks Podcast Network. Thank you to Rageworks Podcast Network, rageworksnetwork.com. Tanya Najjar fights June 17th. Uh, we know that Liam Gallagher fights June 17th. Ty Shea, one of my very favorite uh, guests of the podcast, friend and former co-host, Ty Shea. She fights June 18th. And then I do want to congratulate Eric Anders, who fought last weekend. Did not get the win, but did get fight of the night and kicked ass that whole uh, that whole fight. That was an awesome fight. And so I'm glad that he got fight of the night. Yeah, he, get, he gets money for that, right? Yeah, I guess the 50 Gs. So. All right. You know, so good for him. Uh, and he did announce during the fight week that I think he said he's only got like five fights left in him. I think he said that once he finishes his five fights or whatever's on his contract, I think he wanted to reach a certain number of fights in the UFC. I think it was 20 fights in the UFC or whatever it was, some milestone. And he said, once I reach that, then I'm done. And dude has been a company man forever. He's 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 a great speaker for, you know, he, he, he speaks well for the UFC. He's a good person. And then you put on a fight like that, like that fight of the night in one of your last few, you know the UFC will give him enough fights so that he can do what he wants, right? Yeah. So, which yeah. is really cool for him, man. I love that, dude. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all we have for today. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I know that we have a big sponsor coming on the podcast soon. So I'm excited for that. So we should have like a new sponsor for the podcast for the next like month or so. So that should be cool that we're, we're just working out the kinks of that. Aside from that, I think that's it. I think if you're uh, listening on audio, that's going to be the end of the podcast here. If you're watching us on YouTube, I'm going to throw up some videos here that you can watch and check out. Uh, again, this is episode 122, 123, 122. Uh, so yeah, this is 123. So my goodness, we are blazing along. And uh, we will see you next week, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Next week. I'm looking forward to it. Keep training hard. Keep kicking ass. And uh, good luck with everything. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one, pretty much. Laters.